Now these days, many conservatives say that this is not a democracy. They'll just say it out right. And when you call them on it or say, hey, you guys, if you can't win uh, in a democracy, then you'll abandon democracy. No, no. It's a lot like the immigrant thing where they make up dirty words for legal types of immigration like you know natural born citizens and family reunification they make up nasty words for those and then it's like but well, we're for legal immigrants hey it's still legal you made up a nasty word for it didn't make it illegal it's it's still legal so it's kind of like that with democracy they want it both ways they want a bad mouth i mean my uncle is conservative is uh <coughs> you know he's protesting this idea and he's all um, that's not fair that you're saying that. And then he goes on in a rant about how democracy isn't so great. It's like if you're speaking against democracy. Now, he wants to call democracy majority rule. There isn't majority rule, isn't rule. Well, in a way, there is majority rule, and that's a problem, and I'll get to that, because I'm talking about democracy. and What does it really mean? Um... I will think when people talk about it not being a democracy that it's not a direct democracy, uh, which is an impossibility. You can't have a direct. What are we all going to vote on whether you know the uh, I don't know the assistant director of the EPA's office orders more uh, paper clips? I don't think so. Um, but on this issue of majority rules. Okay, first of all, our system actually is majority rules. The majority, however, is checked and slowed down by the fact that, okay, some things you need a two-thirds majority. Some, you know, you need all the states. Um, so you can't, with the majority, you can't just make every change to every law. You can't change the Constitution that easily. You need a super majority. So there's checks like that. But more importantly, you couldn't have... Demo democracy means originally just it's this idea of, you know, we think of it as the vote and stuff, but no, it's the idea that the cratic power, aristocracy, or oligarchy, these um, hierarchies of power, um, the concept of the power itself, it's the idea that it's in the hands of the people. So majority rule, like some... Uh, what do you want to call it? Totalitarian majority rule would obviously not be democracy because you'd have 50% of the people plus one person. And then if, if it was, if majority rule meant, you know, by the vote and they could oppress the other half. Well, you know, hundreds of millions of people uh, versus a hundred, okay. In America, 160 million people versus 160 million people uh, plus one person, that means that half of the the demos would not be having, you know, crasses, the power. So that would not be democracy. Um, democracy would be where everybody gets power. Now, that means not everybody's going to have absolute power, right? So it would be more like, hey, if there's 10% of the people, then they get 10% of the power. And again, I'll get into this. There's, there is a problem in, in the way we do democracy. Well, there's many problems, but there's a fundamental problem with, the, with, um, with this 10% minority. Now, how do we protect the minority right now where it is a democracy, um, even though it's using the vote and stuff? Well, it's this checks and balances. And you guys are all taught checks and balances in school, or at least used to be. Um, in the, like the federal government that you got the legislative branch and you, you got the, you know, judicial branch and you got the executive branch, right? So that's in the federal government, but a bigger check and balance that a lot of times people don't think about is the fact that there's state, federal, county, city governments, as well as other institutions sometimes, uh, though usually like something like the EPA and other institution will belong to one of those. Sometimes there's even other institutions that have certain kinds of jurisdiction, uh, like on reservations, there's tribal authorities and whatnot. All right. So the check and balance there is like on the federal government, you got to check and balance since there's a legislature 
when the majority, 50% plus one person, elect a president, well, you still have the Senate and the Congress. that will have, you know, even if one party controls all three of those, you know, there's going to be 50, 60, 30, 20%, whatever. Well, not 60 if they're in control, but you know what I'm saying. There's the, the minority is still represented in there. And that's the way it needs to be for a democracy. Um, now, there is a crisis in the way we set up our democracy. One, we need instant runoff or so-called ranked choice voting um, because this 50-50 uh, black and white kind of choice, you know, you just choose one person and not everybody else, it doesn't actually mathematically uh, work out in a positive way. Um, so that's, that's, a, that's a big thing right there. But what I was going to talk about is the 10%. Now, with the problem with the 10% minority in the democracy the way we see it now is the way it's, it ought to work. I think it's supposed to work this way, but there's different theories about this. But if 10% of the people want something, uh, they should get their way 10% of the time. Like, let's say you had some crazy wild people that like exciting things, and they're like, you should be able to to free dive off of any building and you should be able to skateboard anywhere and you should be able to, you know, whatever, these risky fun things. You should be able to use your wingsuit on the back of your car like a kite and you should be able to do all these things. We, and it's 10% of the people, then they wouldn't get to do all of those things, but, you know, we'd let them skateboard or whatever. You know, one in ten times. But the problem with our democracy now is that that 10% has a good chance of never getting anything they want. Why? Because they only have 10%. They can't vote. They have to convince the other, you know, like 90%, but at least they have to get another 40% of the people that don't agree with them, don't want to do those things to have sympathy and make it legal. So... When Republicans are saying they're against democracy, or that we're not a democracy, rather, I assume they are against democracy. Democracy is a riddle. How can we give power to all the people? I think it requires libertarianism. I, that's why I consider myself a progressive libertarian, where I believe in progress, and I believe in individual liberty, and progress is the... We have progress when there's an advancement in individual liberty. And you can't do things to harm other people. That's the riddle that we're solving is what is the maximum liberty? How far can you go? And certainly if you're not harming anybody else, then it would be fine. And the fact that people can make these gray areas where you're doing something that doesn't seem to harm other people, but maybe it does. Like you're just harming yourself, but you're, you got rich doing it. And now you're a bad role model for the society. Whatever people want to argue, we can have those arguments. But basically individual liberty and sovereignty is a goal of a democracy because that's the point every individual person is supposed to have you know if there's 400 million people in america soon then um or whenever then you should have one four hundredth of the total power but also you should have 100 percent of the local power like in your in your abode and space is a thing.